Hey, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about work for physics classes. And this is where the everyday sense of the word work is not what we mean in the physics sense of the word work. And so this sometimes can be unhelpful for students if they carry these misconceptions into a physics context. And I want to talk about the physics sense, but first briefly think about what do you think of when you hear the word work? Okay, and the reason I bring this up is because that is not what we mean, most likely, in terms of the physics sense of the word work. So what do we mean with the physics sense of the word work? We mean something very specific. We mean that work is equal to the magnitude of a force in the plane of a displacement, so a force parallel to the motion, you could say, times that displacement, that delta x here. So in this scenario up here, the component of the force that is parallel to the motion would be the FAX value. So we could solve for the work that the force applied does in the x-axis. That could be a thing that we could do. And that is what we're going to do for part of the example problem to demonstrate what we mean by work today. But to summarize, you could say that work is equal to the force parallel to the direction of the motion times the displacement through which that force is applied. All right, and just a couple other introductory things. So work is going to be measured in something called a joule. So joules are more generally a unit of energy. And this unit that we're in right now is the beginning of an energy-based unit. So we'll be talking a lot about joules, just like we talked a lot about newtons when we were introducing forces. And I'll do more of a general intro for energy in my next lesson. I do want to say that work is a scalar value. The reasons for that are kind of complex, but I do want to point out that work can be negative, and this can be confusing to students the first time they're learning this. Work can be negative. Think of it this way. I've used temperature as an example for a scalar value in the past. Temperature and mass are good scalar value examples. And I've said, what's the direction to a mass? Well, that's that's just a meaningless question. You could say the same thing about temperature. But on a number line, you could have negative values for temperature, right? You could have negative degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius. And in a similar way, even though work is scalar, you can have negative values for it, as if you're reading a number line or something. And the other thing I want to say at the intro is, if we have little subscripts that coincide with whatever it is we're talking about, then we can just add subscripts here. Like if we're going to talk about the network, then we just have to sub in a net subscript over here for the force, and this would hold true. If we were going to do this for the work that the kinetic friction force does, we would say work friction K over here is equal to force sub K over here. And then that equation would hold true as well. And this is an example we're going to be talking about in a moment. But let's take a look at our equations. So first of all, like I just mentioned, you've got work is equal to force parallel to the motion times the displacement through which that force is applied. This is, I would say, the best way to think about work and the most clear way to think about work in physics. You could also add subscripts here, like the network is equal to the net force times the displacement through which that force is applied. And this is a way that it's typically presented in physics classes over here and over here. I am not a fan of these two equations, and I'm going to briefly explain why. Most of the problems you're going to get for work are going to be something like this, where the force applied is going to be an angle that is measured to the horizontal, like this angle, this theta right here, measured to this horizontal axis. That would be like this over here. But you could, and I have seen problems that are like this, you could get an angle that's measured to the vertical axis as a given in the problem. And for that, we need the horizontal component over here. You would actually have to use sine for this, not cosine. So that's why I don't like these equations over here, even though they are traditionally given by teachers or in physics textbooks, because occasionally you will get a problem that looks like this. And maybe it's just on the AP level I've noticed it, but I think these are more general versions of these equations that are more helpful. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a problem. I've written out this problem right here, and I've added the information on the right-hand side. So it says a crate with 5.55 kilograms of mass is pulled across the floor. There is a displacement through which it's pulled. You've got a force here. I've written that angle down over here. What is the work done by the applied force? What is the work done by the kinetic friction force? What is the work done by the force due to gravity? What is the work done by the normal force? And what is the net work done? This is a good problem to fully understand what's going on with work. And before we move on, I do want to point out what I believe are the two most important words in this problem right here. Any guesses as to what those two most important words are? Constant velocity. 
I would say these are the two most important words in this problem. Constant velocity implies that that acceleration over here is going to be zero. All right, so looking at the first part of this problem, it says, what is the work done by the applied force? So we write our equation and we sub in what we're talking about. So we're looking for specifically the work done by the force applied and that we're looking at in the x-axis. We need the force applied in the x-axis because that is the component of force that is parallel to the motion right here. So to get that, we're gonna use cosine, we plug in some values here, and we solve for our force applied in the x. Now that's not work, that's just force applied, so we can go ahead and plug that in over here. So we have to continue for part a, so we would take that force and multiply it by the displacement through which that force is applied, and you end up with this value for the amount of work that the force applied does, 98.4 joules. All right, let's take a look at the work done by the kinetic friction force. So to get this, we need to know a little bit more about the kinetic friction. And here's where we're gonna do the sum of the forces strategy in the x-axis. So I say the sum of the forces is equal to literally the sum of the forces, Fa in the x plus a negative Fk, because it's operating in the negative direction here. The second line of the sum of the forces strategy is what? It's going to be Newton's second law. So you write MAX. In this case, it's X. And you think to yourself, is this something or is this nothing? Is this going to have some acceleration or is this zero? And the answer is this is going to be zero. How do I know that? I know that because the problem says it's moving at a constant velocity. All right, so that means that whole term drops out because that mass, whatever it is, times zero acceleration is going to be zero. Then I can take these and set them equal to each other and solve for my Fk. Now I can go ahead and apply that to my work equation in terms of the kinetic friction force. I plug that in and I end up with 98.4 joules. I'm going to go ahead and make that negative. I can either do that here or later in the problem. Either way, I want to point out to myself that you can have negative work and it's gonna be in the opposite direction. So typically, if you have friction in a work problem, friction will be negative. All right, and let's take a look at the next part. So it says, what is the work done by the force due to gravity? What do you think? The answer is nothing. There is no work done by the force due to gravity. The answer is zero. Why? Why is there no work done by gravity? And the answer is because it's not in the same plane as the motion. Another way of putting this is what component of this force right here would be in the x-axis? And the answer is no component of that. No part of this vector is in the x-axis. It's completely in the y-axis. All right, well, let's take a look at D. What is the work done by the normal force? What do you think the answer is here? And the answer is zero, just like before, with the same reasoning as before as well. Okay, and so let's talk about E. What is the net work done? This is by far the hardest part of this lesson. And I will say this is actually really tough for students to understand the first time they hear this. So the net work done, I want you to think about what you think the answer would be. Okay, the answer is going to be zero. Let's think about why this is. So when we talk about net work, we're talking about net force over here, right? We said that this object is going to be moving at a constant speed. That means its acceleration is going to be zero. And if its acceleration is zero, that means the sum of the forces in the x-axis must be zero. So this is how you justify this another way. You could say sum of the forces here is equal to these two forces. And we know that acceleration is zero. So the sum of the forces is equal to zero. Our net force is equal to zero. Well, if our net force is equal to zero, then it doesn't matter what our distance is. Zero times whatever is going to be zero. And so that's one way to justify our net work is going to be zero. Another way to justify this is just to think about what our net work would be. Well, that's in the x-axis. That's going to be based off of the force applied plus a negative value for the kinetic friction work, the work due to kinetic friction, you could say. Make that negative not twice, but just once. And you would say, all right, well, that would be 98.4 minus 98.4 is equal to zero joules. So either way you justify it, the net work for this system is going to be zero. But if the question is how much work does the force applied do, well, that would be 98.4 joules. So it really does depend on how the question is asked. Or you could say the work done by the kinetic friction force is a negative 98.4 joules. All right, so this is the first lesson in a energy unit that we're going to be doing together. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. I hope this is helpful and have a great day. Take care.